Hello there friends and followers and welcome to this Xplain 11 video. Not too long ago I posted a video on Sim Toolkit Pro. Since then many new major updates have been introduced into the tool. In this video we are going to be taking a look at the new features in Sim Toolkit Pro as well as a quick refresher of what we have already seen in the first video. The very first thing you'll notice here in the change log is that there is a new dispatcher front end for Simbrief, which is absolutely brilliant. It allows you to plan your flights with Simbrief automatically and grab the plan, the fuel weights and charts for the flight summary page. The always on top and mini mode is another big thing in uh, Sim SimToolkit Pro. Uh, it allows you to um, select your taxi destination, then enable mini mode and always on top from the live map to have a persistent overlay of your taxi. The um, network coverage has been upgraded. Uh, as you can see, there is better network flight and ATC monitoring. The coverage has been extended to ATC and sectors, including best guess updating of network flights in near real time, as well as many bug fixes, as you can see here. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump straight to the different options here. Uh, let's take a look here at the uh, approach practice. Uh, this is something that we've uh, uh, that we've looked at. It has been enhanced a bit. You can use uh, an airport near London Heathrow, as you can see here, or you can select the airport here. If we say Echo Gulf Lima Lima, uh, so you can set up, you know, you can select the runway that you want to practice at. Uh, and if you select the runway, you can set the ground speed, the altitude, uh, whether you want to set the weather on approach, and you can also select the type of approach that you want to do. You can do a five, uh, five nautical mile final, three, one. You can do vectors to final, downwind, and base. The landing report is something that we've uh, also looked at in the previous uh, video. Uh, but suffice it to say, if you click here on a view report, it will have a full report of your flight and you can just simply move the, um, the slider here uh, to look at the history of what has gone uh, throughout the flight. As you can see here, uh, plus 92 seconds, flaps incremented and so on and so forth. In the airport database, uh, this is where you can go to interrogate the airport data. Uh, you can look at any airport you want as long as it is uh, available in X-Plane. So, for example, I'm going to just type in uh, 1 Sierra 2. And there we go. The airport is there. And you have the, um, the frequency information here uh, as well as the available runways with the relevant information. The wind calculator is another nifty tool. It allows you to visualize the crosswind and headwind relative to the aircraft. Uh, so if we click on, uh, let's say, London Heathrow, uh, we can select the runway, let's say runway 27 right, and we say get. So this is exactly how the wind is set up right now. There is a 12 knot crosswind from the left, no significant head tail or wind, uh, head tail wind. Uh, the custom weather, now this um, feature has been uh, uh, enhanced. Uh, you can now do real weather um, or spoken ATIS system. You can tune to COM1 for spoken ATIS. You can also use VATSIM weather, which is uh, again a cool feature. Uh, you can manipulate also the uh, updates, weather updates on approach, uh, and you can also go granular. So you can actually say um, stop the um, updates, the weather updates, when you reach 170 knots, which is probably your approach speed, uh, and when altitude is below 5,000. Uh, you can also set the winds aloft update interval here. So really finer um, and granular detail uh, here in terms of setting the weather. Uh, you can also select the custom weather, which is something we've seen in the previous video, and you have your weather presets here, which you can select. The live map has also been enhanced and there is now a taxi system as you can see here and there is also the mini mode. Now the mini mode uh, when enabled uh, you can enable this feature as well always on top and that will keep the window uh, always on top so that you can see where you're going. Um, really nice feature, uh, really a lot of work has been gone into S Sim Toolkit Pro. 
I really like uh, where this application is heading. Uh, personally, I wouldn't even uh, mind paying for it. Uh, it's so feature rich and it's just absolutely great. Um, flight summary and scratch pad. So before we do this, I'm going to go to flight a plan. The flight plan viewer is one of the biggest changes in this version of uh, Sim Toolkit Pro. It allows you to paste your flight plan here and track it or you could load the latest um, operational flight plan from SimBrief. So if I click here, it's going to load the latest uh, plan I have there. Uh, as you can see here now, we can visualize exactly what's going on, uh, which is really, really cool. And it gives you also the distance. So 16 nautical miles to this particular waypoint, 20 nautical miles to uh, this particular waypoint. You can delete as, uh, as you please. Uh, really, really good and gives you, of course, the flight plan length, 170 nautical miles and 36 minutes is the estimated time of arrival. Um, one of the nice things also in this version of Sim Toolkit Pro is that you can export to the Sim. So you can either view the operational flight plan, export to PDF, export to FMS or do in BATSIM pre-file. Now, the other nice feature is that you can automatically um, plan the flight here on SimToolkit Pro, it will automatically generate uh, a flight plan on SimBrief and load it here into the tool. So if we say clear plan, kind of like Project Fly, if you will. So if we go to plan a flight and select departure, Echo Gulf Lima Lima, which is London Heathrow. And let's say that we're gonna go to um, Oslo, uh, Echo November Gulf Mike. Uh, we're going to select the airframe A32200, airline code, uh, British Airways, uh, flight 567. Uh, we'll leave that alone, departure date and departure time. Now, you can click on advance and you can select the units, uh, continuous fuel, reserve fuel. You can set these. Uh, we're just going to keep things simple for this flight. And we're going to say generate plan. Now, once you say generate plan, it's going to prompt you here to log into SimBrief. So let's do that. All right, so SimBrief is now doing its thing and it's going to start generating the flight plan for us. And voila. So we are done now. The flight plan, as you can see now, we have a flight plan from London Heathrow to um, Oslo. As you can see, our departure runway is 27 right uh, through the um, Bravo Papa Kilo 7 Foxtrot SID. Uh, this is our star into Oslo. And this is the arrival runway ILS 19 right uh, really, really nice. I really like this new feature. Um, as you can see here, you can visualize the entire route now to Oslo. Now, if we head back to the flight summary and scratch pad, as you can see, we have the entire flight plan here. Uh, this is the route. This is the actual route. Uh, fuel and payload, uh, number of passengers, uh, fuel in route, taxi, contingency, reserve ramp, all of that information is available to you. The airport information uh, in terms of elevation, transition altitude, very, very useful uh, really for online flying uh, as well as offline flying. Uh, frequencies, all the frequencies that you will need here at London Heathrow, the MATAR information and the TAF as well. You have this, of course, for your departure and destination airports, which is, again, really, really cool. A, a applaud. I applaud the developer for um, the work that he's done and the level of integration achieved in this uh, version of uh, Sim Toolkit Pro. Moving to the live map now, as you can see, this is us right here. And uh, we have auto zoom um, enabled as well as the taxi system. And now we'll be able to use the taxi feature to taxi to the runway. And if we click on mini mode, as you can see now, uh, we'll have the aircraft right here and we can also select uh, again always on top. The previous version of Sim Toolkit Pro had um, a feature where you were able to view all the available aircraft in X-Plane and the respective liveries. 
That um, feature, uh, I guess based on my feedback uh, from that video, has been deprecated and there is now a new feature called the Checklist Viewer. The Checklist Viewer allows you to select an aircraft of choice and view the checklist. As you can see here, uh, this is the Zebo 737 and you can cycle through the different phases and go through the checklist. What's even better is you're able to create your own checklist as well. You can create, create the aircraft name, the author, click OK and start adding the, uh, the checklist items. Really, really nice feature, very promising application, uh, really, really well done. Um, I really like where this application is going. The Network Explorer is something that we've seen in the previous, um, in the previous version uh, as well. Uh, you're able to select the network and then you can view all the available flights on that network and you get all the flight plans and the information uh, on that specific aircraft. Another thing that I really like is the streaming tools. Um, kind of similar to, um, uh, to Project Fly and other streaming tools. So let me go ahead and show you how this works. As you can see now, we have uh, this really nice bar here at the top, powered by Sim Toolkit Pro. Uh, it's got the departure, destination, ground speed, and all the other information, uh, which is really a cool feature uh, for streamers. Really all-in-one application, uh, Sim Toolkit Pro. I really uh, have a lot of appreciation for what the developer has done. Uh, I do salute him for his dedication to the community and for creating such great tool for the community to use. Another feature in the new version of Sim Toolkit Pro is support for Navigraph um, ARAC data cycles. As you can see here, it's displaying the latest, which is 1908. It's very simple. All you need to do is go to your Explain folder, uh, go to Custom Data, your GNS430, if you have Navigraph, just download that, uh, copy the nav data, and then go to documents and somewhere here you will find some toolkit pro and you have nav data just right click paste and you will have the latest um, air app database for sim toolkit pro the connection monitor hasn't really changed since the previous version it acts as a passive data recorder uh, for your flight well, folks, this pretty much brings us to the conclusion of our short show today. I hope that this was a useful and insightful video. If you have any questions, please do post them in the comment section below. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.